Hello and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 800 comedians and counting over the last 45 years. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, the brilliant Rob Roos. Yes! Hey! Yes! Hello! Hey! <laughs> Hello, Hi. mate. How are you? Hey. So, I'm all right, Richard. I hadn't um, banked on how complicated it is entering from screen. <laughs> now, is that screen right or screen left? I don't know. <laughs> on a rolling, rolling office chair. But, um, <laughs> well, it's. I mean, it's fantastic to see you. It really is. And thank you so much for doing this. Um, um, Any time. It's my absolute pleasure. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure. Well, well, you're very kind. Um, the, I'm well aware, actually, before you do anything, Richard, yeah. it's uh, Helen Rotter on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, um, I've. I hope you don't mind, I but can... I've, but I've chopped that off because. Um, uh, That's I, fine. That's yeah, fine. Because Just, I've got you know, your name underneath the thing, so they know who you are. Because um, there appears to be nothing I can do about that. I think <laughs> Helen borrowed my um, computer at some point, and <laughs> since then I've lost all uh, control over it. So I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> well, please, please do pass on my regards to Helen. Of course um, I will. Of course um, I will. We're coming on to the shows later on that you're in. Anyway, um, let's go right back to the start. Um, and when you were growing up, you, I believe you grew up in Yorkshire, is that right? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, that is incorrect, Richard. <laughs> um, the, uh, what a no, start. <laughs> can, I, can I take my mask off? I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, taking yeah, my mask do. off now, <laughs> as long as you, you feel safe. I feel now, the reason I've got it on, <laughs> The reason I've got it on is um, I've worn it more than usual today because i had to go to a couple of essential shops right uh, but i'd forgotten well just remembered in time that i just finished recording a sketch at home in my garage where we are now yes um of a character i've started to call colin pickering right uh, who in a nutshell just complains um about any sexual intercourse he sees in nature <laughs> documentary that sounds and fantastic. He's calling, he's calling for the removal of David Attenborough's knighthood. Essentially, that, that's his most. Oh, that that's his modus fantastic. operandi. Um, but but it, I did shave. I had a bit of a beard. I shaved it into a moustache, which I've never ever had a moustache before. Wow! So on this, the, yeah, this, this is, is the big reveal. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> so I went to the local garden centre. Uh, knowing full well that I had a moustache in the league, but they didn't know. <laughs> quite a fruity experience. So, but I'm going to take this off because it's yeah, getting yeah. too hot in here. So here we go. So yeah. I've now got a moustache. Yeah. Um, oh, because, mate! Because... It suits you! <laughs> exactly. If indeed I want to look like a sex offender. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I need to... I do need to get rid of... But I'm going to record one tomorrow, it's so it means me leaving yeah. it on yeah. overnight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so hence all of that to explain. <laughs> so, mate, it's not Yorkshire you were brought up in. No, I was uh, born in Macclesfield. Macclesfield. Um, and uh, you want to shoot your researcher? Richard. I know. Well, it's me. It's me. Useless. I'm absolutely useless. Don't, don't pursue yourself, Richard. Because, <laughs> no, because, you know, what you've done <laughs> is a perfect question because it's like an open end, you know, and that's all. all <laughs> All those comics dream of, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> an open end from an audience member or something, or a chance to, to get something wrong, and exactly. we're away. So, what a, what a yeah, great absolutely start. wrong. I was not born so, in Yorkshire. So, I was born in Macclesfield. So, so Max, well, well, I'm Cumbrian born and bred, you see. Yeah. So, um, that's probably why it's wrong. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> you were born in Macclesfield, and um, I, when you were growing up, did you watch a lot of comedy? Were, were you did you watch a lot of comedy with your parents? Or well, yeah, I mean, yeah. the I grew up in a small village on the edge of Macclesfield, right. and um, there was one bus uh, <laughs> feels like a day uh, into, or maybe it might have been an hour, but it might as well have been a day because there was <laughs> nothing in Macclesfield anyway that I was that interested in. Um, <laughs> And a, but a, a very kind of rural upbringing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but yes, telly. The, the telly was. Um, I was always intrigued by 
Uh, you know, the, in, when I was a little kid, Malcolm and Wise yeah. and the two Ronnies, there's all that stuff that was on. Yeah. And then, and then I remember really connecting with Blackadder, the second series, didn't understand the first one. I remember uh, a teacher at primary school, towards the end of primary school, showed us the first, some of the first series from a historical perspective. And wow. I just didn't get it. But by the second series, I, I really got it. Because it just it, it's just it's so rhythmical oh, and it's it brilliant. so yeah. clearly funny. The characters are ace; they're really yeah. well defined, yeah. and it's just gold, isn't it? it stands up brilliant. beautifully. Um, so that, and then, and then from that, probably discovered Fry and Laurie. I used to watch a bit of Fry and Laurie every time that was on. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. And um, and then I remember a, a, a big light bulb moment was uh, watching uh, Channel Four, and then this fella in a white suit popped up and said. Um, I'm Vic Reeves, watch me Friday night, nine o'clock, <laughs> channel four. And I just remember that thinking, exactly the same. I'm there. Yeah, I'm the, were you the same? You had, to, you had to watch the whole show, even mm. although you didn't have a clue what was going on. It, it was fantastic. Absolutely. It was fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 I Sorry, was yeah. very lucky to see uh, Rowan Atkinson on a very early tour, talking to Blackadder. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah. and uh, Angus yeah. Deaton was the straight man. And then yeah. I saw Vic Reeves' Big Night Out on tour, oh, and, oh, and they had Les, who was a brilliant character. Yeah, and he would walk on, and he would have to climb a step ladder and fish for loaves. <laughs> and they, and if he caught one, the audience <laughs> would go bananas. It was just the best, and I thought it's, this it's, is fantastic. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's brilliant, isn't it? Like yeah, what? Just so and, and I was just, but I was, yeah, but I, I was captivated by by it by the from the start and i yeah. think it's just because and they do exactly the same thing now it it's i mean a million and one funny things they've yeah. done that have made me laugh yeah probably harder than i think anything yeah because yeah. you never expect what they're about to do <laughs> um i mean i just i mean i got i was i was showing the kids some bits on yeah. youtube the other day of um you know, there's a bit on a well, very recent series of shooting stars where he was dancing with one of the girls at the Pussycat Dolls. He's going, what's the feet? What's the feet? What's the feet? And his, and his trousers come down to reveal a bare ass, And he's clearly got his knackers out to everyone else. I went to a recording of shooting stars and mm. uh, at the BBC and, and George Dawes, Matt Lucas, was playing the yeah. drums and I laughed so hard at him, he mm. couldn't carry on. He had to leave and come back up again. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, there's just... my trademark laugh yet again. <laughs> well, there it is. That was, was, that, was that the birth of it, Rich? No, no, no. Rich? No, no, I could, no. The birth of it was Tom O'Connor in, really? in 1977. We went as a family. Incredible. Uh, to Torquay for a holiday yeah and uh, I was taken to see Tom O'Connor at Paynton and uh, uh, I laughed and because I laughed uh, he uh, it flawed his act because he didn't realize how oh, loud wow. I was <laughs> so he was like <laughs> right I'll carry on and, and by the end of it you couldn't hear him but um, the first wow first gig I ever saw was Tommy Cooper and Le then Les Dawson so it was a oh great my God. Uh, it was a great where did you see where did you I saw see them, Les Dawson I saw them, saw them as a family both in Scarborough we, oh. we, we used to go to Scarborough on holidays and, and uh, um, we saw them at the festival theatre and Tommy Cooper um, up, the curtains open there's nothing on stage but a bed and uh, he's lying on it and after about 10 minutes everybody's laughing he hasn't done a thing and he pops his head up and he yeah. goes what what has somebody come on <laughs> <laughs> and, and Les Dawson oh, is just the best but, but uh, I'm like you the, the, the reason why I write the blog is because of Morecambe and Wise I've got a mm. section in my blog called the ones that got away and they're top of the list I've seen every yeah. play every book every video about them anyway Let's move on. No, so, I, I genuinely... Yeah. Sorry, sorry I forgot. I'm, I'm really pleased that you would agree to sit down and be interviewed by me, Rich. No, I'm, I'm, but I'm, it's I'm my genuinely... I, yeah, great. Thanks for coming on. Um, so, because, so, no, genu I'm, I'm genuinely fascinated. Yeah, As yeah, you, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, Because I think... Um, yeah, so, I mean, if I'd have been able to see Les Dawson oh, and brilliant. Tommy Cooper live, brilliant. I mean, that would have been a dream. Because I remember when you talk about influences, 
I also distinctly remember watching live at the um, Palladium the night when Tommy Cooper died. Yeah, yeah. On TV. Yeah. And because I, I was watching it. Yeah, I was watching it, was it with my act. dad. Yeah, it was very um, sad. Yeah. It was hugely sad, yeah. and certainly watching it at the time, though, like because my dad was introducing me, you know, saying he'd always said you've got to watch Tommy Cooper. We would watch any, anything he was on, and it, it was that thing that the fact the curtains closed yeah. after he collapsed yeah, yeah. with his yeah. feet poking out, and yeah. then it went to a break, didn't it? Yeah. And it and it and still they had to felt carry like on and finish the finish yeah. the show. It was awful, Ab absolutely tragic. It, it was it was awful, yeah. but. The, but <laughs> without being uh, brushing over it, we were still laughing when yeah. it went to the commercial break. Because it, it, like you, you're saying, it being on think, stage in a bed for ten minutes, it's not think, it's not out of the realms. Yeah, you've you've got to think you've yeah. got to think how awful it was, but what a way to go with the audience laughing. Absolutely, it's, it's awful. Thing he died with his yeah, like, it's yeah. horrific. It's so sad. Yeah, um, and but like it's it's he died with his boots on. Yeah, didn't he? yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, it, it just, I just it, yeah, he was magical, and, yeah, and Les was, Dawson as well. Just, just incredible. So you're at home watching all this comedy, and uh, yeah, how did you become a comedian? So my, uh, I went to sh my entire education was a series of cock-ups and defaults. Right, um, <laughs> took all the wrong <laughs> options, all the wrong A levels. Right, uh, fucked up my A levels scraped into uh, Sheffield University to do a degree in geography because I was just desperate. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew I needed to get out of the town I was in. And I, do you know what I mean? I was, I was quite a late developer, late bloomer. Um, I was, you know, like a lot of comics, I probably was, I'd say in hindsight, I was quite shy. Yeah. Um, I'm real sure of myself, but I, but I knew I needed to get out and I didn't know how to get out unless I kind of managed so and, and just a general studies exam and I snuck into Sheffield and uh, and then when I was there just started like you know just met some good friends started playing in bands um, and then I got involved at the end of my time at university after a, a breakup in a play and um, on the first night of the play that I was in I, it was a point when just I was on stage and uh, it was uh, the self. The set fell down. Oh and, mate! And it, yeah, it just collapsed around me, like a bit like Harold Lloyd. <laughs> and, it, and then, and then, you know, and then a bunch of like um, all the students ran on and tried try to put everything back up. Um, but I was acutely aware that I just had to keep talking, so I just started talking and and addressing what was happening within the context of being on stage and it got laughs and and i remember away. thinking that yeah that, and and those laughs in that moment felt so different from the ones that we were getting in the play so what year was this oh christ um it would have been or maybe 96 97 wow. or something like wow. that and then i hadn't really thought but but up until that point generally you know the thought of being on stage horrified me yeah yeah i didn't right, want yeah. to do it I used, to, I used to try and get out of it at school. I remember once when I was at school, um, uh, I had to come in early one morning because I'd been pissing around the day before. <laughs> and, uh, well, and I had to come in early and tidy up the classrooms. And I was quite anxious about it because we, we were doing some school play about Ramesses or something. I can't yeah, remember what yeah. it was. And we all had to wear kind of wigs and, and uh, uh, sugar paper skirts and stuff. <laughs> And um, I can't. And I haven't learned the lines. I haven't learned the words. I haven't learned the dances. <laughs> and while I was tidying up, because I was clumsy as well, I, I managed to put my get my foot stuck in an ice cream tub of, uh, of crayons, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I upended and smacked my head. Where is it? There's a scar on it still. Is it that side? I cracked my wow. head open on the on the corner of one of the, you know those octagonal tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tables. Horrible, awful. I cut my head open and, I, oh. and my mum had to come and get me and then take me to uh, casualty to be stitched up. But I remember thinking at the time, at least I've got out of being in the school play. I was thrilled. <laughs> so, so it was never really something I, I, uh, I thought. So I, I never knew I wanted to be on the stage or knew whether whether I did or I didn't. It, it felt like, but when I found uh, when I found using my own words, yeah. then I felt I had a 
<laughs> then 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 it sort of came I so suppose. when um when you decided to com become a comedian did you did you do like five minute spots in pubs to get to get so what did i do so, or, yeah yeah so i did i did that that play when the set fell down yeah and then a while later some of the people from the the drama group that i'd i'd sort of draw got drawn towards not being interested in my, my subject or anything got drawn towards um They'd done a year before a, uh, a charity gig in in the local in the Fox and Duck pub in Sheffield, right? A stand up gig, and they said they reckon I should do it. So I, I kind of so like, yeah, and I was so that, I thought, so yeah, that was your support. You had you, you yeah. had people. You realised you think you could do it, and you were away. Yeah, and I remember before I did it, I was sick everywhere. Wow! In the back of the pub, so and, nerves. Um, yeah, really nervous. And then I did it, and it. And it, it just it just everything started crackling it was brilliant i loved it and then um and then yeah and, and i just thought after that right that's what i want to do yeah. that's what i want i've ne I'd never felt anything like it well my my blog i i always say my blog is an enthuse because uh um uh, it's 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 like a tribute uh, to all the heroes that get up there and have a go and do it you know and, and watching you all from the audience is just extraordinary um but, oh. but but one year, um, I had to go at stand-up comedy, and and uh, did you? I, I did it. I've done it twice, and yeah. I've, and I've told this to many a, many a comedian on here. Um, I I um, uh, wanted to get it out of my system because I was I was watching them all the time, and I thought I think I can do that. And um, yeah, I went to a gong show. It was at the Edinburgh Fringe. I went to a gong show, and it was. Um, uh, a, a, an old folks gong show which was in the hay markets <laughs> and and Brilliant. and the guy said yeah 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 you can go on you can, you can have a go so i wrote this script and uh and he said oh yeah go on you'll be done you, you got three minutes and um i ran out and uh, i was terrified and i had the microphone and mm. I went, Lad ladies and gentlemen People think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, the ski jumper, but I can't see the resemblance myself. And there was, yeah. three, and of course, I was the double of him then. And 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 yeah, the, yeah. And there was and there was three people in the crowd, and one bloke at the back just went fuck off and gung me off. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked off in my own footsteps, and the bloke said, "Have another go, go again, go again." So I went yeah, to one yeah, later. Yeah. Same similar thing happened. So I, so oh, I thought, well, mate. never say never again. But um, you know, you'll I'll always um, I'll always uh, sit and watch in awe because uh, it's it, it's just the best experience to both watch and I can imagine do as well. You know, when you get the laughs, oh, it must be amazing. It is a lovely feeling. For I, I think um, I've, I've I've had lots of time to think about it over the the various lockdowns yeah. that we've been in, um, which. Who knows? We might be in a different place by the time this goes out. But, hopefully, but, hopefully. Yeah, but but it's interesting. Something which I've been doing for twenty, uh, you know, over twenty-two years. Wow. Um, without any ever ever having another job. Yeah. As has you know, for the first time in that um, in that you know in that time frame, become something that feels a little bit more like um, a hobby that I'm yeah. still doing every day. And and I know that uh, I know that it will come back, and I know that things will happen again. But it's been an interesting time to do it, uh, it kind of online and setting up the Patreon page and stuff, and but still committing to writing and, and performing stuff, but in yeah. different ways, uh, but without it uh, paying the bills, you know. So it's it's a very di and 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 it's a big question that you end up asking yourself yeah. about whether what why you do it. And, and actually, despite, you know, the insecurity of my entire business going down the fucking toilet, right, <laughs> for the last year, what it, what it has it done, <laughs> no, exactly, hopefully it'll come back, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, it's been absolutely decimated, like so many things have for so many different people in so many different ways. Uh, but what it has done is it, it's, it's straightened out a lot of, in my head, why I do or have been doing what I do. And then also it opens up your brain to different ways, slightly different ways and very different ways of doing what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's fascinating so, um, because um, if I didn't have this, if I didn't have the blog or um, the online comedy or going to a comedy night or having mm. such a passionate interest like the comedy, I don't know whether I'd have got through the... I, I would have got through the lockdowns and everything, but, but I think you need an interest other than routine to keep you going generally in life. You know? Yeah, you need... you yeah. need Yeah, well, I think, yeah, you need passions, don't yeah, you? And, yeah, and I think... Yeah. And you also need to think, like, how you want to spend however long you've got on this earth, yeah, what you want to be yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's interesting. It's really interesting. Fascinating, and, and yeah, yeah. I think... Um, uh, and, and I've discovered, you know, I've realised that one of the things, the core things I, I've always loved about stand-up is you can make anything. You've got you've got this, the opportunity with 20 minutes and a microphone or however long you've got to, to, to go anywhere. You can yeah. talk about anything. You can be anyone. You can pretend to be in any situation you want to. There's a myriad of opportunities. There's no limits. And, and as a stand-up, you get to make things all the time. And I've realised through this lockdown, I've done a lot more DIY. I've done some building, you know, just to try and, you know, pay a few bills and, yeah, and bits yeah, and yeah. bobs and yeah. stuff. But all of it is fed into the a sense of creativity because it's it feels like, again, simplified for me, I just like making things. Yeah. And whether that's a joke, a sketch, a song, you know, a play with Helen or building a gazebo for a mate yeah yeah, you know, yeah it's yeah. all making stuff and it's all creative, creative stuff if you're creative and doing something then you're flying is that what you're saying exactly yeah yeah, yeah. if i'm making things yeah. i feel i feel happy and at ease and yeah, yeah. and 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 just kind of to circle back to how we got into this but the thing i love about uh comedy an audience is laughing is it, it feels like in that moment when we're all on the same page that we're all connected. It's as yeah, simple as that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's an it's a way of saying to people, "I like you," and I'm saying, "I like you." We like each other. We like we like people, and that that's that's for me is what kind of jokes ultimately are about or comedies about. It's a magical it's, thing. Well, it, it's a short distance between two people, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, is. yeah, There's some so. phrase there I've absolutely butchered. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. It's, <laughs> it's you're so true in what you say um you won the prestigious so you think you're funny award at the edinburgh yep. fringe in 1998 correct correct thank one you point. yes um, one point describe the experience <laughs> of entering a competition winning it um you must have, that must have you must have thought i can do this as a as a full-time job now well, I, it was uh, it was it was a heady thing. Uh, it was you know it was really I was living off my nerves. It was yeah. I was keeping on a floor at someone's house who was doing a play in a room with about nine other people, um, and I remember like being on the back steps of the old Gilded Bloom, which is where like the back of just the tonic was and and the the mash house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, yeah. like literally going through my stuff again, 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 again. And then running in and doing it, the final, and um, and Bob Mortimer was one of the judges. Wow! Which was which is incredible. Graham Norton was the host. Wow! And he was amazing. He was a very um, good stand-up comedian in his oh, day. Oh, so good, but, yeah. so good. And uh, and slight sidetrack, but uh, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Um, I worked with him on a few different, few little bits and bobs in the past, and I've also done warm-ups for the Graham Norton show right. years and years and years ago. And I've never seen anyone in a studio run a show uh, and keep the audience utterly entertained. Oh, and it no, no. literally, yeah. like no more recording than is needed. He'll do, he'll do the whole show in about an hour and five minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it's just seamless. He's flawless. He's absolutely brilliant. Like, is I think he's like, yeah. he's peerless in terms of yeah. like all the, the people yeah. we've got who, you know, host shows and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, he hosted it. But in the final, um, so I, I won it. Carrie Quinlan came second. Right. A chap called Moz came uh, came third. He was a character called Moz, sorry. Um, and um, but yeah, Dan Altopolsky wasn't placed. Reg Hunter wasn't placed. Wow. Yeah, it, it, pretty crazy. So, albeit, it, it, what it did teach me was that 
some things you'll win, but it's not a competition. No. And then actually, it's about what you do, whether you win or lose a competition or you don't get through or whatever. It's about what you do next. That like, yeah, always yeah. is. Yeah. You know, yeah. because, um, it, and it's, and it, and it ultimately, I think a competition teaches you that it's not a competition. Right. And I think, had I not been placed in the final, I think still, if I'd have had the gig like I did have, then I still would have ended up doing like the university shows, which everyone ended up, you know, Dan did, Reg did, we all ended up doing. Um, so, and I still would have carried on doing gigs, so it wouldn't have made... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows well, what difference it would or wouldn't have made? Who knows? Who knows? Well, well, whatever it is that you do, I think it's all experience, especially with something like comedy. You know, every gig yeah. you do, whether... I, I always say, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I always support all comedians, but I, but I support a new comedians coming up. And mm. um, uh, I always say to them, you have to have a bad gig to make yourself a better comedian. It, you have to. Oh, yeah. You have to. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you know, you have to experience. I, I can only imagine sitting from the audience, but my guess is um, uh, you learn a heck of a lot every time you do a gig. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's like anything. You can't you can't make anything until you've made something. Yeah. And yeah. it's never it's like it's like if you think if you're trying to put a routine together, like as if you had a big lump of clay and you were trying to make, I don't know, uh, a a bust of um let's say uh, the lady in Lionel Richie's hello video is making a, a thing of Lionel. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, let's <laughs> is that what <laughs> Anyway, but she starts off. She start off with hoiking a big lump of clay down, yeah. <laughs> and then and then she get a, a kind of a rough shape, and she shows someone to go. If Lionel sees that, he'll be fucking horrified, love. <laughs> and then, then she'll do a bit more work, and then people go, "Oh, it starts to look like Lionel." And then <laughs> someone eventually mistakes it for Lionel, and um, yeah. So, so you can't. You have to get it. You, you're never going to get it exactly right yeah, the first yeah. time. You have. To, you have to learn how to uh, essentially metaphorically do gigs with your trousers around your ankles yeah, yeah. and sometimes li sometimes literally if you yeah. do it with Bill Kay. yeah <laughs> let's let's move on to edinburgh because um let's stay with edinburgh actually because um i take my holidays at the edinburgh fringe i'm very lucky to go for a week and i go and see about 50 shows in the week and i need holiday by the time i come back but i've but I've enjoyed yeah. myself so much because I see all the comedians up there. What was your very first Edinburgh Fringe like? What what, what did you think of it? How did you feel? Uh, what were you doing there? Uh, well, the, I mean, the, the first one officially was when it was 98. Sorry, I think you're funny. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, hickey burp. Right. And then, and then the... the <laughs> The, the first time I went back properly was the following year. I did a show with um, Ian Bolsworth and John Williams called Big and Daft. That was our first one of those. Right. And uh, we were in a tiny little cupboard in the back of the Gilded Balloon on the Cowgate called the Wee Room, which actually was a storeroom. I know exactly where you are, yeah. Yeah. Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and we had an absolute riot in there. Yeah. It, it was, it was and, and we didn't, you know, we it feels like, um, and I'm sure every, every generation feels the same. It felt like we really didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have a plan. We were no. just we were just smashing through it and and just uh, not really thinking about it. And we had a great time. It was it was and you know all the highs and lows that you would expect of your your first Edinburgh and and um, but no, it, I was it was a really lovely way to do it for the first time to to kind of a bit like being in a band. You yeah, know if. Yeah. if you, you've got each other and you've got each other's backs and you can entertain each other even if the audience isn't, isn't quite getting it yeah, but yeah. um in general we had a, we had a really good run of it and it was uh i think it developed you know it, it became a little bit of a kind of a, a cult kind of um yeah little show to go and see it was did good you fun. do the did you do the full run did you do the 25 we did yeah yeah we yeah. did the full run yeah we what? did so we did three three in a row three yeah. of us in a row as big and wow back. that's yeah. brilliant um now this next question is quite long, but um, this is uh, basically what I have seen you in because whenever I go to Edinburgh and see your name listed, I genuinely get a ticket straight away. And my friends Aww. who come along with me 
always say you're superb so um, well thank you richard and can i just say a little thank you or a big thank you for for all the tickets that you bought <laughs> there. well the question is you, you keep you're keeping the lights on mate you keep the lights on <laughs> The question is, I've seen your brilliant Edinburgh shows. I first saw my family and the dog that ate Jesus in 2009. <laughs> then I saw yeah. Through the Looking Arse in oh, yeah. 2014. And yeah. then I saw Funny in Real Life in 2019, which was a show written by and starring both you and your lovely wife, Helen. Yeah. You are a brilliant comic storyteller. Tell me about the writing process. How do you get your ideas? Well, uh, I'll show you. Hang on, we're in the right place. <laughs> You're doing one now. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> so, just it's just you just write notes. Yeah. Just I just write things all the time. Right. No. And then and then sometimes you print things up. There's stuff written on the back of bills. And then, then there's other stuff in the back pocket of notebooks, which will be, what, well, there's a receipt there from the comedy store. Yeah. A pension statement. I don't have a pension. Who's is that? <laughs> um, and just these random, you know, set lists and right, yeah, nothing's yeah. written down longhand, but just lots of little bits of paper that feel, and then in here, look, there's loads of them, back pocket set lists, thousands wow. of them, yeah. that would have done about 10 gigs in a back pocket being added to. And then they get sweated through in your jeans and they, and they turn into like lace. There's loads of them and sh shit loads of them. And I've got, um, and there's, so, there's, so, so there's presume, loads of them. Presumably you have a big jigsaw of all your notes and then they just all link in. Yeah, well, I, I kind of, so I think, yeah, you just, you just keep scribbling yeah. or just jotting things down. And then it's different at the moment, but if, if you're know, normal, normal, normal seasons, of the kind of, of of the comedy seasons, yeah. You just I, you just go and do you do as many gigs as you can and just write on the hoof and yeah. and um, especially you know now I've got a, a family. I don't really I never I've never sat down and written stand up. No, out. no. It's always something that um, I kind of have an idea, yeah. And then I'll think it through a little bit and then I'll blurt it out at a new material night or on stage and see where it goes. And then I just record everything usually and then listen to it back and. And generally, you can always hear where you cocked it up, or oh, it needs it needs to go off in another direction yeah, there, yeah. or it need it needs to move. Like the minute you're bored with it, how on earth can they, you know, the audience be interested I in it? So I it's, I it's like that. Really. Well, following on from that, I, re I remember you were on something like half past ten in the stand, or something, or eleven o'clock in the stand for through the looking ass that I went to see. But yeah, it was about it was about, I think it was, yeah, it was about tennis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I'd been at shows all day and I was absolutely exhausted. And mm. what I loved about your performance was just the enthusiasm and the determination to get that crowd of people laughing at that hour. Thank and, you. And, and, and <laughs> yeah. that is one of your greatest qualities. Whenever I see you, it's like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these people laugh if it kills me and you're away. And it, and Bless you. you. Succeed. It's interesting, like having hearing someone say that to you, because that's also probably when I'm doing a show, I'm also aware that it's potentially my Achilles heel as well <laughs> if I'm doing a gig, because yeah. because it is a thing. It's a bit like trying to juggle gas or water or have you ever you know if you accidentally crack an egg into your hand, <laughs> like the more you want to try and get it into into the bowl so you can scramble it or you giggle the more sometimes the harder you try and push something the less it works yeah, do you know yeah. what i mean so yeah. so it it's an interesting thing because i certainly when i start out i've always had a lot of kind of sort of energy on stage and quite kinetic or mm. uh quite manic sometimes and then sometimes that really works and you can surf on on that energy that you sort of you create waves of it. Then other times you have to learn to to roll off and and just and work out where the audience are and not chase after them. Like, yeah, so you have yeah. to be a bit more of a cat than a dog. So you have to want the audience needs to want to follow you rather. Yeah. But you have to be doing something interesting for them to follow you. Yeah. 
but if you chase after them like a dog that needs to please them <laughs> then they they smell a rat and so it's, a, it's a really it's a tricky thing but i think it's something that i'm drawn yeah it when it it feels that yeah it's about it's just it's a strength but it's also can be uh the 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 weak point in my um yeah my achilles heel that i have to be careful not to lean on it too hard because then that's when things can fall apart i think well the other the the, the other aspect of your work i think is the originality and and it especially shone through when you did the 2019 show with your wife because that started off as a full-blown argument and everybody around yeah. me in the in the audience was like, "Oh my God, what's going on here?" <laughs> and then there was this fantastic realization that, "Oh wow, you know," and it, and it was just a terrific performance. Oh, you. it really thanks, was. Mate. Um, it was so it was so much fun to do that. Yeah, like, yeah. we did one where um, uh, Jade Adams and Rich Wilson came to see it, and. Helen hadn't met Jade or Rich at that point. So at the start of the show, when I'm on stage doing stand-up and, and Helen starts, starts heckling from the audience, and, and just if anyone's not, well, most people won't have seen it, so that was the that was the sort of the, the shtick at the start that I'm on stage doing this stand-up show that I thought was meant to be on at 11.15 at night. It's actually 11.15 in the morning, <laughs> but I'm trying to make the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and as I start, it starts to get a little bit more agricultural. <laughs> Helen, who has got a baby, you know, has got some childcare for that yeah. morning, has come to see the show, starts chipping in and uh, and disrupt, <laughs> derailing it. Now, when the night, the morning, sorry, the morning, I keep saying the night, the morning we did it with Jade, when Jade and Rich were in, yeah. Jade didn't know who Helen was, right. didn't know that she was obviously part of the show, and she started telling her to shut up. Oh. And then <laughs> Helen... <laughs> Helen started tearing into Jade, saying, you know, that she was she was appalled by what was going on stage. Jade was saying, he's just trying to do his show, love. Leave him alone. And, all and they were really going at each other. That's and brilliant. it really exploded. But Rich is sat next to Jade. He knows Helen. And he knows, he knows it's Helen. He knows <laughs> what's going on. But he just kept his mouth shut. That is fantastic. And there's the originality, you see. And it was great yeah. fun. And it was but, so every day that show would be different. And it's it's yeah. really exciting when you can build something into a show or a gig or whatever where it, it, the, an element of it has to be chaos. Yeah, yeah. But because but you but the joy the joy is riding that chaos out yeah yeah well it was superb it, it really was. oh th- um, thank you thank you you have a radio show on xfm uh incorrect uh point you, you, you lose had a, point a radio there. show on xfm i did a long time ago yeah, but <laughs> <Right. laughs> more recently more recently yeah i mean when did i see that that was probably about two thousand, God, two thousand and about maybe twenty fourteen, something like that. I can't remember. Well, but I've done not far quite off. a lot of stuff on Radio <laughs> Sheffield. So yeah. So you've done radio. I'm, I'm not trendy enough for and... SFM anymore. Which... <laughs> you've done radio. Well, I'm and on you, a moustache. And you've and you've appeared notably in the Ben Elton Shakespeare sitcom on TV, Upstart Crow. Because I've I've seen yes. you in that. Um, yeah. Describe the differences of working in TV and radio as opposed to live stand-up comedy. Uh, the um, well, I suppose, well, I suppose the, the beyond the obvious ones of um, you know I have to drive myself to the gigs <laughs> and back in different places, whereas the studio generally is in the same place. Um, I think what the, what what are the different things you you have to. The, so as you have to be adaptable so you yeah. have to learn you learn or you do learn often by failure that how to be your the version of yourself that works in that different medium right. i suppose that's the challenge i think and that's the challenge but i think stand up school preparation for that because that's the challenge that you do every single time you go out and do a show you have to you're in a different room a different audience different acoustics different environment the journey there was different um there's a, there's a there's a different resonance in every room all that kind of stuff that you have to tune in and find out how you play your tunes in that environment and then 
radios, uh, you know, ra radio, you think, you, I think you have to be a lot more intimate and you have to kind of talk as if you're talking to that one beautiful listener. Um, <laughs> well, we're well, you're a natural. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a bit of that. And uh, don't be afraid to get quite near the mic if you need to. <laughs> Um, um, the, that's the killers on uh, <laughs> That's brilliant. And then, uh, and then, and then, yeah, and then, and then, uh, um, the the sitcom. That's a different kind of a different vibe because it's collaborative, right. and, that, and that's and that's great fun because yeah. you're getting to play with all these wonderful, funny, entertaining, you know, lovely people. So that's brilliant. Very different things. Yeah, that is superb. Um, we're all living in strange times. It's a horrible, horrible year, an awful time. Um, how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs? Because I've seen you many times at Dear Old Always Be Comedy, and I saw yeah. you online there broadcasting from your garage trying to sell us all the caravan. Yeah. <laughs> Which no Which one... Was superb. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, but it's, it's all right saying that, Rich, but no one, uh, no one got the ready now. <laughs> She's still out there. <laughs> well, if I had the money, I would buy it. <laughs> do, you, do you want a second? Do you, do you want a second look? <laughs> no, it's okay. Honestly, it's okay. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, if you change your mind, um, how do you find? Have you done a lot of online gigs? Uh, Are you missing live stand-up? Definitely, without a doubt, I miss it. Like you know, it's it's like a like a limb. Yeah. But um, I think. Uh, I had a bit of a breakthrough. I think it was doing the Always Be Ones, uh, where I, instead of the first online gig I did, I remember I stood up and uh, I, I had some ideas on the wall and um, I didn't have headphones on. And I just real and I, it, it was awful because I suddenly <laughs> felt disconnected. I couldn't really hear the audience. It was be it, before people decided let's yeah. have 30 people with their mics on yeah, yeah, yeah. like before it, like it was a mess to start with and um and it because it, it everything is about meeting in the middle isn't it between the performer and the audience yeah. and it's working out how you do that and then this zoom stuff is more limited but then when i realized that you know that actually this little this little box we've got here which has to turn into a box <laughs> You could then take that anywhere with yeah. a mobile yeah, phone, or yeah. you know, when when I discovered like that, um, I could bring in, um, I could bring in my dick thumbs. Uh, then, oh, that um, was that. What a joke that was. <laughs> then, then I realised, I realised, yeah, we could do it together. It just just uh, with a, a little bit of bringing something, you know, playing with um, <laughs> with the frame. So with it, you could, and, and it's, it's like everything. It's about. It's all about once you know what the rules are, yeah. you work out how you break them, don't you? Yeah, and, yeah. and what the limitations are, and then you've got boundaries to perform within. So I found sitting down made a real difference because it made me stop jiggling about. Yeah, yeah. And then it allowed me to properly listen to the audience that you you could see and you could hear, and then it enables you then to get some timing into it. And it's yeah. all about playing around with yeah. the dynamic, isn't it? So actually, it's surprisingly. I find more connected than I thought it would be, um, and I think actually, you know, th there's there's night, no, you know, you could do a gig to people on the other side of the world, yeah, yeah, um, and or then maybe maybe you know when things open up uh, again, hopefully, maybe actually there will be a case that might still be some online gigs, they still stream them, I, yeah, I, th I, and you, I think they might well do for the audiences. Yeah. From, from yeah, yeah, and you and you don't have to drive to yeah. drive to yeah. you know Shittington on sea yeah, you know, yeah. for, for <laughs> yeah. seventy quid. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you know, spend most of it on petrol. So actually some other gigs will become more um Accessible. worth doing. Yeah. And 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 yeah, for, for everyone, hopefully. Yeah. So hopefully I'll we'll you know we'll we'll get some positives out yeah. of it. I totally agree. I I miss so much having a few beers in a pub and then going to a going to a comedy gig. Uh, yeah. on a on a Saturday night or whenever but this is um the best substitute you know as I, as I said earlier on if 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 I didn't have the online comedy I I would go mad mm. and certainly the first ones that I went to 
didn't have any audio on them so I was sitting there laughing with this humongous laugh laughing at four walls and neighbours banging yeah. on the windows and I'm thinking I'm <laughs> going to get taken away yeah, but, but then then the, the audio happened and, and it was great because you had the yeah. the comedians could hear the laughter and could have a chat and all the rest of it and it was great um, I suppose we do have to think about you know what it's been like for your neighbours over yeah, the last yeah. 11 months Richard but, um, very um, much so yeah. considerable more noise coming from your flat who is that loud coming well, he's the, he's the, <laughs> yes is that a smoke alarm <laughs> um, like me do you go in the real world do you go to uh, a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience well, I mean, uh, a short answer would be no, but not because I don't enjoy it. It's simply because, you know, just if three, four, five nights a week you're doing gigs yeah. in, you know, in, in normal times, then um, if I then said to uh, Helen on my remaining, I'm going to go out and go watch some comedy. <laughs> um, that might not go down too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, me... and, and, and also as well, like um, you, you get you you get a good fix yeah. when you're doing the gigs, yeah. you know, as yeah. well. Like I was, that I, kind well, of, um... well, I was just going to ask you if you're on a bill of comedians, would you stay mm. and watch the rest of the night? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, unless I've got to be back or go to yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think part of you have some of your best gigs when yeah. you know you've you've been a part of that night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, because they really do happen in the moment don't they i'm yeah. reading phil k's book at the moment yeah brilliant and yeah. um it's incredible isn't it i mean every page has got something yeah. that makes you yeah. kind of kind of yeah spit your cereal out it's great yeah um I, but, I, but I, yeah, you, you, I always remember hmm. watching you always be comedy and a police car went past and you told that classic morecambe and wise line about he won't, well he you won't have get to more. and i thought this guy knows his stuff. Oh, there's one, there's one there! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the new one, He's not going to sell many ice creams going to ask me, is he, Rich? <laughs> and I, and I, hey. and I thought, well, if he likes Markham and Wise, that's fantastic. Um, just before we go, and I've so much yes. enjoyed this, um, uh, is there anything oh, else? Oh, I thought we chat to you. Is, is, there, is there anything else you would like to say? Where can people find you on social media? Are you doing any online shows? Are you doing any writing, books, anything like that? Yeah. Well, I mean, every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, I put original and brand new stuff on Patreon. Yeah. On patreon.com forward slash Rob Rouse. Yeah. And I started it in... <laughs> End of May, I'm going to say June. And it's June. superb. It's superb. Thank you. Yeah, well, you, you uh, bless you. You joined, and and I, so I see that as being that that's a way that I can do a gig five days a week, essentially. Yeah. Um, and put things up. So there's brand new stuff on there every single day, and it's like uh, the, the hard. I mean, I'm keen to do as many things like this lovely podcast as I can because the hard thing is like getting everyone getting their stuff out there relies on social media which is a bit of a kind of a wild bin fire of yeah. emotion and anger isn't it <laughs> but what i would say to anyone if they're thinking of becoming a patron it's a bit like uh, it's a bit like supporting your local shops um and but you get the thing delivered direct you to do. your inbox every you day do. and um and you can watch it or you can just go oh, i'm just happy to that yeah. they're doing stuff for this it's such a good idea there. because you pay like a monthly subscription and then you're away like you say you can watch what you like yeah, yeah. And, and i set it so that whether anyone you know i think it's a pound to get in yeah um but people can pay whatever they want every month and yeah. they get to see all of it regardless of what they pay and i, I like that idea that then some people who, who uh, want to pay a bit more can, and that means other people who can't afford it can pay less and yeah, yeah, everyone exactly. gets to see it. Great you know? idea. Great Trying idea. Trying to keep the lights on. And are you on social media at all? Uh, yeah, I'm at Rob Rouse on Twitter and at Rob Rouse Comedian on Instagram. Brilliant. And Facebook is at Rob Rouse Comedian as well. I think. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I've so much enjoyed talking to you. I really have. You're, oh, you're, likewise, you're such a funny, funny, warm man. 
to chat to. It's Stop just it. hilarious to chat to. Oh. <laughs> to chat to. I wish you all the very best. Well, Richard, and I, and thank I hope you. to see you live again soon. Well, I look forward to it. And, and genuinely, I w wouldn't be the only comic who thinks this. Like People like you who are really into comedy and really, really support what comics do, you are so, so valued and so such a wonderful person. And, we, yeah, we couldn't do what we do without you. You're brilliant, mate. Well, You're really brilliant. That's very, very kind of you to say. And what, and what a way to end this interview, praising me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not, mate? Why not? Why All not? the best to you. Thank you so much.